Hey everybody, I'm Todd Anderson. And I'm Ross Miriam. And you're watching the Versus series by StarCityGames.com. So today we're continuing our walk through the Hall of Champions. Uh, basically, we just dug through uh, the last 10 years of Magic and found five of our favorite finals of Pro Tour matches. And we are replaying them. Uh, so far, the first two videos, we did a little Concertar here. Uh, what was the one before that one? Uh, eh. Spent oh, so uh, Manguchi versus... Yes, Green White Tokens against Bant Company. So yeah. uh, very well-known decks. And today we also have two very well-known decks from this for uh, from this format. Uh, Todd is playing the winning deck. This time is playing the uh, Mardu Aristocrats uh, deck, which changed a lot over the course of the following four months or so. Yeah. It, it, this version, the original, started out as a somewhat a much more aggressive version with Champion of the Parish, mm -hmm. a lot more humans, uh, and then had a lot of the different backup uh, options that became staples of it later on. Eventually, there was the Act 2 version of the deck that emerged that was a little bit more mid-range and controlling that centered around the Boris Reckoner and uh, Blasphemous. Blasphemous Act interaction. Uh, and then there was eventually an Abzan version of the deck as well. So uh, a lot of different cartel aristocrat decks got played over the course of this format, but this was the original one. On my side, I am playing Jeskai Flash. So that fall, there were a lot of different Flash decks. It started out as Blue White. I believe Adam Prozac uh, built the original list. Uh, that that it sounds right. Yeah, uh, they became popular for a while, and then Boris Reckoner got printed before this Pro Tour, and Gate Crash was the breakout card of the tournament. It's in both of our decks. And that was the main reason for going from uh, Blue White to Jeskai, although there were Jeskai lists before Boris Reckoner as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I played all sorts of Blue White, Flash, and Jeskai Flash decks and, and over the course of, of that entire standard format. And uh, the one that I personally liked the most was the one that Jerry used uh, to top eight this same Pro Tour. Uh, I think he ultimately fell in the quarterfinals. but the semis. Uh, I don't think, I think he, lost, he them. lost in the quarterfinals. I bet some money on it. I was, I mean, I, I was at home watching the whole thing. So, <laughs> and I'm anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, the 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 breakout story of this tournament was was this deck that Tom Martell played, the the Aristocrats deck. As you as you said, it went through multiple iterations over time. Um, this version, you're going to see things like Champion of the Parish. Those weren't in future versions. They, they were way more about Doom Traveler, uh, Blood Artist, just stalling the battlefield with things like Lingering Souls, and then using a big Blasphemous Act to either combo kill you with Boris Reckoner or uh, with uh, Blood Artist plus Sacrifice Outlets. Yep. So uh, the deck became more mid rangey. Uh, Brad Nelson championed the Abzan version over time, and that became the, the, the stock one, like the best one, because it just had more uh, sticky creatures, like Voice Resurgence would die yeah. and create something. Once the third set, you have Voice, you got Veralls in the yeah. Abzan version, so there were a lot of different tools. Voice was a really big one, especially well, against these Flash decks. Oh, for sure, and Voice it was, was just great at, at stalling some of the more aggressive decks as well, but, um, you know, th this was the, the original iteration. I believe Sam Black was was uh, the developer for the deck uh, that Tom Martell ultimately used to pilot. You're going to see us talk about some of the card choices a little bit, because this version has only two leaders. Lingering Souls main deck, which just boggles my mind because every version I ever played of this deck had four. Yeah, but that's just because things changed over time, and he was preparing to to fight more controlling decks by being more aggressive. And like you know, I have the the double strike pair paladin. Like there's, I got some messed up stuff in my deck, so we're gonna hopefully see it all come together. Uh, this matchup is gonna be really tricky though because we both have Boris Reckoner and we both have Blasphemous Act. So we have to kind of count the creatures every turn to see, like, <laughs> well, am I just going to die next turn? Like, <laughs> Really want to stay above 13. <laughs> yeah, for, and for... you really want to kill Boros Reckoner uh, in response to Blasphemous Act at some point. Hopefully that happens, but, you know, we'll see what happens. You actually have a cool little infinite life trick in your deck, too. Do you want to explain that one? So, yeah, there's a, a single copy of Moment of Heroism, which if you don't, uh, see this trick looks completely out of place. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what happens is it, you can pump your own Boris Reckoner and then cast Boris Charm to make it indestructible and then have like some damage be dealt to it, usually with a burn spell or maybe you do it in combat. Yeah. Uh, sometimes to set it up, yeah, that's the third part. And once damage is dealt to it, you keep, ha like it will trigger, you keep 
targeting itself with its own trigger. It's indestructible. It won't die. Damage keeps getting dealt, but it has lifelink, so you gain a bunch of life. Yeah. And it is, uh, you can also do it with Azorius Charm, giving your creatures lifelink. So a couple different ways to put it together. But that is why the single moment of heroism is there. And I believe if I go to 8 billion life, you cannot win. Um, you're right. I don't have infinite damage in my deck. Yes. Anywho, uh, so that's the matchup we're going to be playing today. This is the finals of Pro Tour Gate Crash. Tom Martell's uh, The Aristocrats versus uh, Joel Larson's Jeskai Flash. High roll, so you goes first. Let's do it. All right. We're one on one on die rolls this week Oof. so far. Not a strong one. Ooh, ah. barely. Work right. smart, not hard. Yeah, I'll be on the play. Let's take a gander at this here opener. Ooh, Vault of the Archangel does not look great alongside Boros Reckoner, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, this hand's a little slow. But since you know we're playing the finals, we we know the list. We don't need a really aggressive start because the game is going to go pretty long. Uh, I'm going to keep it. My hand needs a little bit of help on the little land light, but I have some stuff to do in the meantime, so I'll keep it. Got the shrine, sulfur falls. So we see this uh, a good bit uh, in standard at the moment. We have you know lands that count as plains and swamp. But we also have things like Isolated Chapel, which check for, uh, you know, basic land types. So it's kind of cool to see that this interaction has kind of been in standard before. Yeah, the man in this format was quite good. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to name Wizard off this Cavern of Souls. It conveniently hits most of my creatures, mm -hmm. including Boris Reckoner, so it doesn't hurt there. Yeah, and the fact that Cavern can uh, tap for blue for Augur and Snapcaster Mage and also tap for red slash white for Boris Reckoner is... Now, Augur Bolus, 1-3. You look at the top three, you put them on the bottom of your library in any order. Right. Ooh, I hit, though. Oh, nice. Gotcha. Whenever you hit, it feels real good. Yeah. All right. So we can go to the air here and just play a Lingering Souls. It's one of the better cards in this matchup, uh, just because it's so hard to deal with so many bodies. So we're going to do that and get some, get spirits. some spirits. Okay. Could have played a Boros Reckoner. But I don't really want to play it just yet. I'd rather make sure we uh, resolve that. All right, I'm at a uh, 19. Well, I have yet to draw a third land, Tight. which is a problem. How many did you put on bottom? Zero, actually. Hmm. Lucky. Uh, I could play another auger, but if I hit, I'm going to have to discard anyway. In order to not discard a card for no value, I have to just send a burn spell either upstairs or killing a spirit, which is... Not good. Um, and the thing is, I don't think I really want to kill a spirit because my best way out of the pile of spirits is Blasphemous Act <laughs> and I'm light on mana as it is. <laughs> so I'm actually just going to play the Augur. Okay. Trigger again. That's a land. Okay. Well, I'm going to choose an unsummon and then I'll discard it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Alrighty. Um, I think I'm just going to use mana efficiently here. We know he has Pillar Flame, so we don't want to play a two toughness creature. We're just going to go ahead and get our own Boar Trackner active. Hit you for two. At 18. And this card's actually not super easy for the blue eyed decks to deal with. Outside of Azorius Charm, most of the removal is damage based. So we actually get to just kill an Augur Bolus here. Yep. And that slows down Blasphemous Act as well. Attack for one. Yeah, 18 all. Eight. Pass. It's not looking good. No, but how bad could it actually be? Pretty bad. Um, so his hand's all spells. I have to try to basically maximize damage because he's going to kill virtually every threat I play, and I think just Lingering Souls is the way to go here. So uh, even though it's going to push us closer to Blasphemous Act, uh, go ahead and do that. I'm going to Soul Bond with this spirit. I'm going to hit you for three. I'm at... I'm at 15. I know he has Pillar, but hopefully he doesn't draw a land, and then he can still only cast one spell. I drew a land. Okay. It's Pillar of this thing. Yep. You go on. Play another Augur. All right. It's currently... See, Blasphemy Back costs, what, 10 to start? And then it costs 9 to start. 8 9 red. to start. Attack so for 1. 3 plus 6. Uh, I guess you can Blasphemy Back the next turn. You're at 17. Yep. 17, 15. Yep. 
The race is on. I got Boris Charm. I'm good to go. Yeah. All right. I'm going to try to just prevent Blastmos out next turn and play Boris Reckoner. Hit you for four. So you're at 11. Yep. He just cast Blastmos Act. Whoop de doo. He dead. <laughs> he dead. He has to kill it first, which is nice. Uh, go. Okie doke. <laughs> oh. Cavern named Vampire. Declare tax. Sure. What's up? Uh, <laughs> you don't look like you're in great shape over there, Ross. Snap cast and unsummon on the Falcon Wrath, I guess. Okay, I'm just dead. What? No, 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 no. I'm literally no, 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 no. What do you want no. me to do? I can I have no white mana. Yeah, but you could just draw white mana next and turn. And do what? I'm dead to the aristocrat. Mm, you can Zorus Charm it. I can, like, block here. Yeah, you chump and you only take or one. Or, like, I... Like, no, because I know if I chump with this and I lose this, or I block here, I take six, I go to five. Okay? Okay. And then I draw a clifftop retreat, which enters tapped. Okay, now you're dead. <laughs> That's fine. I just want you to try. I, I want mean, you I... to be actually dead. I was. Okay. Okay, we're here for sideboarding. Uh, on my side, I am cutting some of the aggressive elements of my deck, trimming down on Boris Charms. Uh, I'm also cutting the Moment of Heroism. I'm a little interested in it and trying to like race, but I don't think that's going to come up that often, and I already have the Azorius Charms to give lifelink if I want to try to set up the combo. Mm -hmm. And then Is It Charm is just the weakest removal spell. I don't think the Spell Pierce mode is particularly good. And we're... I on I mean if I I don't get me wrong or whatever. I, I think Boris Charm is just bad. Like that's not the type of thing you want to be doing in this matchup. Like maybe giving yourself indestructible in response to my Blasphemous Act or whatever, but like I don't think Blasphemous Act is actually very good from my side in this matchup. Um we don't have them in the main deck, right? We just have them in the sideboard for like the big combo kills, uh for uh matchups where the the board can get gummed up, but I think it, at the very least, like, is it charm kills most of my cheap things while also being able to counter uh, some of my more expensive stuff? I don't know. I, I mean, board charm just seems mediocre. Like, it's one of those cards that you want when you're boarding in, like, Geysas ain't trapped, right? And you just want to be able to kill your opponent. Yeah, maybe I just want to cut all my Boris charms. I mean, it doesn't interact well, with my creatures at all. That's, that's the sure. only thing I'm concerned about. Well, I'm concerned that my deck does not have, like, strong answers to your Thing. So I need to turn the corner very quickly. I don't have counter spells. I don't have a removal spell that cleanly answers Obsidat. Um, Lingering Souls is a problem unless I have a sweeper. Sure, but I mean, I can also get out of damage range pretty easily, right? Like, if I really want to with the uh, the freaking the, the land that gains lifelink, Soren. You have both of the Archangels. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll try oh. it your way. We'll just cut all the Boris Charms and keep in as much removal as we can. The Verdicts are definitely good here. Another way to answer Lingering Souls and clean up a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, also a way to answer Cartel Aristocrat, mm -hmm. uh, which does not usually die to Blasphemous Act. The Pillar of Flames, a nice addition. We'll add, add the fourth one. And then Thunder Mahalkite is really good against Lingering Souls yes, and Falcon Wrath Aristocrat. And is a card that really helps me turn the corner. So this is the card that I'm really looking forward to having in my deck. Because this card is the Nutter Butters. Yeah, Thunder Mahalkite's busted. At, at some point it became... Like a a two or three of in the main deck of of decks that play like Geist of Saint Traft and like you know a couple early tempo counter spells like uh, Essence Scatter and such like I I loved that deck when I played it. Yep. Uh, from my side, we are going to be preparing for a much longer game. Uh, Silverblade Paladin is pretty bad. It dies to Pillar of Flame and all the the cheap two damage burn spells. Uh, it also just kind of incentivizes me to overextend. Uh, so I'm I'm going to be trimming that Skurzak High Priest. I don't think this is a matchup where this is a real card. This is more for uh, you know the the ground pound matchups where your opponent either doesn't have a lot of removal spells or 
uh, you can get this off on turn three before they actually have a removal spell active. Yep. Uh, and Zell's Conscript doesn't have a lot of targets. We had one in our hand the whole game, and it just did nothing. Uh, cards I'm considering bringing in besides these. Uh, Tragic Slip is a, a great answer to Boros Reckoner, a number of, of the more problematic things that Ross can throw at me, but it requires Morbid. And the I, I you know this version has Sacrifice Outlets, like we have Falcon Wrath and Cartel, but I just didn't feel like it was enough to... to bring it in. We may change our, our tune in game three if we get whooped by a Thunder Mile Kite, but for now I'm just going to bring in uh, some cards that are really hard for Ross to beat if they resolve. Yeah, just three really powerful Orzhov threats there. Okay, here we are for game two. I'm on the play. I'm going to be able to cast a lot more spells this game, so that's great. And hopefully they're good. Yeah, my side, uh, we're on the draw, so our hand is okay. We definitely want to draw a couple lands, but we have a good start otherwise. Okay, Steam Vents. All right, that's not exactly what we wanted, but we'll take it, I guess. Uh, 18, Doom Travel Law. I'll go to 18 and pass the turn. All right, so very likely some sort of counterspell or removal spell, but since our hand is gummed up with a bunch of cheap stuff, we're just going to start casting them. Knight's good. Knight of Infamy was one of the cards that were, was added to the deck. Uh, having pro-white meant Boris Reckoner couldn't block it, which was a pretty big deal. Type for two. Or declare tax. Yeah, attack's fine. I was just thinking about whether or not I want to cycle this or put the Doom Travel on top of your deck. The one mana is not worth a whole lot. I think I want to try to find some gas. I think I'd rather just cycle it. Okay, so you're going to take 2 at 18. Take 8. Or 16 from your land, sorry. Oh, you have Exalted. Yes. So it's 2 damage? Yeah, I forgot about that thing having Exalted. Um, Too late now, you already drew a card. Yeah, whatever. I'll go to 16. Thing is that like that Doom Traveler is not attacking next turn anyway. That's true. So uh I'll go to fourteen. Play Untaboros Reckoner. Alright. Okay. Let's play another knight. Hit you for four. I'm at ten. Go. This isn't good. <laughs> yeah, attacking through Boris Reckoner is a big deal. It, Knight of Infamy gained a lot of stock once. Uh, uh, draw a card. Sure. Pass the turn. Curious what he's digging for. Maybe you just need to hit that fourth land right there. So he's probably got Supreme Verdict. All right, I did you for four. I'm at six. Play a Doom Traveler. Go. Mm. <laughs> Ross is struggling over there. It's very frustrating. Second blue four. Oh, I guess Snapcaster Zor's Charm. Attack for five. Uh, sure, I'm going to Orzov Charm this and kill you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got <it. laughs> Okay, once again, the uh, one person is down 0-2. It's happened every day so far. <laughs> Going to try to salvage that win. I have an okay hand here on the play, but I need some help with my mana yet again. Yeah, from my side, uh, we are a little slow. We don't have a one or a two drop, but that could change in a hurry. I think this hand is good otherwise, and we do drew a two drop. So. Pass the turn. So in uh, as the format progressed, it became uh, more and more important that you sandbag your cartel aristocrat until you had another creature on the battlefield. And well, and because we drew a champion of the Paris, I might actually just do that anyway. Uh, because with all the spot removal running around, it was actually pretty difficult to get Cartel Riskrat off the battlefield if they had a another creature in play. Um, and it ended up mattering a ton with things like Blood Artist. I'm sorry, give me a sec. Of course. Right. Uh, but you know, this deck doesn't have that combo kill element with Cartel plus Blood Artist, and it's just a generic creature that's pretty good. I'm gonna play around counter spells here. 
I think. No, that's my deck does not have a single counter spell in it. Oh. Okay, never mind. I guess I was just thinking more of, of Jerry's version. All right, I'm just gonna use my mana efficiently. Your turn. I will cycle the Sorcerer's turn. Okay. Tilt. <laughs> <laughs> We did it. All right, so you're at 18, and I am at 20 still. We did it. We found red mana, and it's going to get pillared, I'm, I'm assuming. After sideboard, I actually cut quite a few humans, so champion's worse. I probably should have led on that instead of the cartel anyway. You can get So, lesson learned, more than likely. Um... Sixteen, pass the turn. Oh, I wonder what you got over there. It's just like playing against Collected Company. They just pass on four mana. They obviously have nothing. Yeah, you're very lucky. Walk. Pass priority. Cast this. Yep. Link this. Yep. It's gonna happen anyway. Just let it happen. Uh, we are going to. I will select Azorius turn. Okay. I don't really want to take damage. I'm gonna cavern on. Uh. Human, I guess. And we're going to play Linger Souls plus Champion of the Parish and say go. Wait, what did you reveal? I'm sorry. Azorius Charm. Okay. I thought there was a chance he would actually blink Augur and then block Forest Reckoner just to get it off the battlefield, but I don't find these Azorius Charm is pretty bad. Yeah, 13. Or, sorry, uh, 17. 17. Um, faster. Yeah, these are the types of games where I start to lose. Early pressure dies. He hits the land drops. Cast resto blinks. Good cards. I'd like to put that one on top of your deck. All right. Um, fifteen. Obsidot trigger. Go back up to seventeen. Yeah? No? Yeah? Uh, Before it exiles, I'll bounce it. So I'm at 14, you're at 17? That's what I got. Okay. Your turn. Yeah. Uh, 15. I could have attacked last turn with Spirits, but I was kind of afraid of a rest, sure. though. 14 all. Pass. Uh, I was at 17, down to 14. Yes, sorry. Yep. My bad. All right, goes council. So I'm at 12, you're at 16. That's what I got. Yep. Uh, pass priority. Okay, before this exiles, let's double burn it. Yep. Opposite that is. Very Tough good. one to deal with. Yeah. I think now i got to get a little aggressive with Lingering Souls here and just hope he doesn't have another one. Attack for three. Uh, 13, 13 to 12. Pass. Well, that was a good draw. Vault, attack. Um, so I can flashback Lingering Souls and use Vault. So I think I want to attack with all. That was a very good draw. Um, it's going to make racing very difficult for Ross as well. Hmm. Yeah, I'll block. I'll gain three. Um, so you go to 16, I go to 10. That's what I got. And I'll try to flashback souls. Yep. And say go. And a turn I'll rev for three. Yep. I go to 13. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> now if he thundermaws me, we are basically dead. So let's hope that don't happen. Um, wish you for three. Man, aren't you glad that is that charm wasn't a Borov charm? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, eh? <laughs> so you're at thir 13 all? So yeah, that's what I got. Could take it or leave it. Augur. Yeah, sure. Yikes. I assume you're not casting that, but... Feel free to. 
Um, yeah, I don't think so. I think I would rather uh, it's wizard, get a reckoner, and pillar a token. Okay, pass. Uh, let's see. Cavern on wizard. I'll play this. And I think I'm just going to attack for three, but not lifelink. Because if he kills this, I get to vault and shoot this down with death touch. So I'm just going to hit you for three. So it's 10 to 13. Yep. Your turn. Um. Hey, mush. Sent cast. Put this on top of your deck. Yep. Uh, six, 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 six uh, seven. Mm-hmm. Pass turn. Uh, go. Um, this is a spot for Ross where uh, you have how many Springberg cards? basically becomes a dead card. I'm I'm tapped. You have nothing. You're at seven. Yep. yep. Okay, pass. So if I attack with this. It's just going to take three. Then I have the potential to go, like, block these three or whatever. But he can freely attack with these and first strike down these. So I think I can actually just attack with just this. Okay, go to nine. Yep. Nine to seven? Yep. Go. Uh, Pass. Eight. Um, go. And a turn. For rev for four. I was going to attack last turn, then I drew a rev. I'm like, yeah, plan's changed. So you're at 12? Seven to 12? Uh, yeah. Can't imagine I'm winning anymore. It was really close, even after the rev for three, but the second revelation almost always closes it, unless you're dead right then, right there. I think at this point I just want a verdict. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're like super I... far ahead on cards. Yeah, I'm just going to verdict away the boards. Yeah. Bring tugs. Everything's just easier when your opponent has absolutely nothing instead of you have a lot more things. Yep. Uh, Blasphemous Act, pass the turn. Actually... I might just have to wait until I find another creature. Because this, this might be my only way to win with Falcon Wrath. I guess it's going to... He probably has two removal spells anyway, or at least in his Warrior's Charm. It's, it might just be worth just swinging it's seven. It. Yep. And put this on top of your deck. Yep. Attack you to six. Spear you, snap Spear you. Sounds good. All right, so uh, I, I think this matchup is a little bit closer. Me starting off 2-0, I felt like... Um, kind of put a damper on the matchup because there's so much back and forth uh, between these two decks and the fact that you have all these burn spells with like Boros Charm, Searing Spear, Snapcaster Mage means that I'm basically never safe unless I'm at 15 or more life. Uh, your flash creatures with Restoration Angel, um, you know, just Snapcaster Mage coming in out of nowhere, being able to do a lot of damage, just chip damage, uh, is pretty good. And in game one especially, like I don't have that many Lingering Souls, um, I don't apply that much pressure. And I feel like me, the, especially game two, game two felt like a fluke. Like you didn't do much of anything. I killed you with just some stupid Knights of Infamy because you didn't draw one of your 10 red removal spells. Yeah, I, uh, I yeah, didn't draw red removal. I had some snaps, but I only had one blue source. So I could never like send both down and like maybe block or like do some cool stuff there. Um, yeah, and just sort of 
took an aggressive route and, and got blown up by the Orzhov charm. So that game's a little bit fluky, I agree. Um, I think the really interesting part about this matchup is that I'm not really a control deck, but because of the power of Sphinx's Revelation, I'm favored going long, mm -hmm. even though I don't have hard answers for things. But what Revelation did was like one, one led into another, which led into another, and once you started casting them for four or five, the game ended, mm -hmm. because one person was just so comically ahead on resources that you could start throwing two burn spells at an opposite at. You right. could start throwing two spells at, at this and that, and then refuel a little bit with Snapcaster, sometimes on the, the Revelation and Restoration Angels, and get a little bit more card advantage that way, and they, they just got buried. So you didn't really need ha single hard answers for everything. You wanted the more flexible answers in and the cheaper answer is so that you would survive. And as long as you survive, Revelation just took over by itself. Yeah, I mean, and there, there's a lot to be said. We Earlier this week, we talked about uh, virtual card advantage as well as, like, uh, having spells that, that, that generate, a, you know, more than one card just by playing it. And Sphinx of Revelation just kind of changed the game in that respect because you could afford to burn two-for-ones against uh, just to, to to stay alive, and then once you hit the pinnacle turn where you had the the one spot with with, with breathing room, the Sphinx of Revelation almost always ended the game. Uh, like your Sphinx of Revelation for three, I thought I was very lucky to even be in the game after that, and then the the second Sphinx of Revelation for four allowed you to trade effectively uh, like lingering souls and two Boris Reckoners for Supreme Verdict, two. Augur, two Boris Reckoners. A and resto, a restoration and a snap angel. and a snap yeah and the snapcaster mage and like it was great you still had five cards in hand yeah <laughs> like I, I had an azorius charm in hand and i was gearing up to i snap azorius charm because i was gearing up to try to get aggressive mm -hmm. that stopped when you played the second reckoner and once i drew drew the revelation of the gold now we don't have to be aggressive at all and i was like, even though i threw away that value essentially mm -hmm. the way the game played out just didn't matter yeah no, the, this matchup's really cool. Um, I actually would have loved to see the the version that Jerry played against this deck because Joel's was uh, a little more burn heavy with things like Boros Charm um, and a little more tempo oriented, where Jerry's was way more of a control deck, like with yes. the counter spells. And it actually used Sphinx of Revelation better than any other deck, uh, except maybe Esper Control, like later in the format as uh, uh, as more 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 decks came in, and that that was like my favorite part of that standard format was just uh, contain, 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 get to the point where you can cast Sphinx's Rev, hope that you draw the answers, uh, and they're cheap enough to actually get you back into it. And that led to some really interesting ways to build your deck. Like when I played the Esper Control decks, like a, a you know six months to a year later, I had my sideboard uh, all cards that cost two or less, so that after sideboard, I could play this this uh, chip damage game where I could take a few points here and there, but as long as I hit my land drops, and as long as I stayed, you know, at a reasonably medium life total, I was just going to bury you at some point because my things where I was going to draw three or more cards, and then I was going to get untap, and I was going to get to kill everything. Yeah. And then I was still going to have cards left over. So the power of Sphinx's revelation just comes from the back of having enough cheap cards to actually use those extra cards you draw in an um, efficient manner or time efficient manner. Right. And I think a lot of people failed in, in the deck building aspect uh, around Sphinx's Revelation by having things like Blood Baron of Orzova in their sideboard. Viscopa. Uh, Viscopa, excuse me. Uh, you know, just ex these expensive threats like... Uh, yeah, the traditional way of attacking yeah. the, these matchups was to have more haymakers because you needed to keep slamming them. But Revelation was the one haymaker that you needed as long as you just answered all their stuff. And it changed the way that you had to play against it from a like an aggro and mid-range standpoint, you couldn't, again, bring in haymakers from your sideboard, get ahead, force them to tap out for a verdict or some other sweeper or multiple spells mm -hmm. to stabilize, and then slam a haymaker that would take over. They would just rev, use a bunch of cards to deal with your thing and, and kill you. So your haymakers had to be aggressive in some aspect. Mm -hmm. And you saw the three cards that you brought in, um, Soren, Ghost Council, Ghost Council and that. Lingering Souls, yeah. or, or Soren Obs, yeah, Obs it out like... It, Act actively kills them. It doesn't really gain card advantage. It just gains life advantage, mm -hmm. uh, and is a difficult to kill. Lingering Souls again, difficult to kill, but actively is attacking them and killing them. And then Soren just combines super well with Lingering Souls. The emblem stays around once they kill it, and uh, makes all your other creatures better. So again, very aggressive threats that you're bringing in. They can gain a little bit of card advantage here and there, but still, like, you're centered around killing them because mm -hmm. you couldn't go long against Revelation. The card was just oh yeah, one hundred percent unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, I know we, we talked a little bit uh, yesterday about uh, something very similar because Dick Through Time kind of replaced Sphinx's Revelation 
shortly after Sphinx's Rev rotated out. And it was uh, this card that it actually took like a couple of weeks for people to realize that Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time were just unbelievable. Just like nearly ban worthy. And the fact that neither of them got banned while they were in standard, you know, by today's standards, they would be banned. You know, the fact that they're banning Smuggler's Copter, Reflector Mage, like these these cards that, that feel like innocuous, but they can go in a number of decks and they kind of have some feel bad elements. Uh, like Dig Through Time was one of the most disgusting cards I've ever played in a deck, let alone standard. You know, I played four in in uh, Legacy once Treasure Cruise got banned. Uh, the fact that it was allowed to stay around after Treasure Cruise got banned just made no sense to me. When they banned both in Modern, like immediately, like how do you make that mistake? I don't, I don't know. get it. I don't get it. Ours is not the reason why, Todd. <laughs> Anywho, uh, that's going to be all for me and Ross today, but come back tomorrow. We got more sweet Even Hall of back Champions. In time. Yeah, we're just, we're just uh, you know, basically time traveling hey, here. I don't know what their perspective is. What's back for them? I don't know. Back? Does that work? I think that's it. Back in time. That's where we're going. Like turtles? turtles yeah, in turtles time. in time. Except instead of turtles, you got Todd's and me. But only one Todd. Okay, all right. <laughs> He's just going to keep babbling if, yeah. I don't, if I don't cut him off. That's the signal. Yeah. <laughs> That's all right. the cue. <laughs> Thanks for watching the Versus Series by Star Games, uh, StarCityGames.com. Make sure to tune in tomorrow. Where we'll continue our journey through the Hall of Champions where we revisit Pro Tour Finals past. we got some sweet ones for you. I'm not going to spoil it today, but make sure to come back tomorrow for that. For Ross Merriam, Todd Anderson, see you soon.